Hey there, CPA students. I'm excited to be able to share on this topic. You know, about 10 or 15 years ago, I had some heart conditions that the doctors could not figure out, and I had this shooting pain that would go from my heart down to my arm, and I looked for all kinds of solutions, and eventually somebody recommended going to see a woman that could look inside my blood and be able to um, prescribe natural remedies for this. Well, that seemed a little hokey pokey to me, and I, and yet I had come to the end of, of the medical world that could help me, and so I was kind of willing to, to take a look at what this was, but I wanted to make sure that I was following God and doing what He said. And I had been praying about this heart condition for quite a while, so I just really committed it to prayer and said, Lord, please confirm if this is the direction you want to go for healing my heart situation or if you even want to heal it. Well, the next week in church service, the pastor was giving a sermon in the book of Exodus where the Israelites had just traveled through the Red Sea. He had miraculously saved them. They were singing and dancing. And now they find themselves in the wilderness and the desert and they're thirsty and they get to the pools of Mara. And at the pools of Mara, they can't drink the water because it's bitter. It's full of a bacteria. And this is the place that God shows up and he tells Moses to put a tree in the, in the um, pools and it will convert them to, um, to not being dangerous for them because they were full of bacteria. And the tree goes in and sure enough it turns the water from bitter to sweet. And then um, this is where God declares himself, Jehovah Rapha, I am the God of healing. Well that really pricked my attention and I thought, what does that mean? Well, the pastor then went on to say that what we know now today with the pools of Mara, because they're still in existence today, is that they're loaded with electrolytes, the very thing that the Israelites needed to get through the desert. Electrolytes are what you need in seasons of drought. And it's also very high in magnesium, which helps your body to rid yourself of bacteria. And so here is our God declaring himself God of healing and giving us what we need from the earth to take care of that. And that was the confirmation I needed at the time. And I said, Lord, I think this is confirmation. I'm going to go ahead and see this woman. And sure enough, she knew exactly what was going on in my system. My liver wasn't cleaning my blood properly and therefore was leaving these little shards that were causing pain when they went down my veins. And so I did a natural cleanse with her and voila, I've had no heart problems ever since. And it was God's way of healing me. And it's just one story of many where he provides healing. What an amazing testimony by Mrs. White, sharing how God used his sovereignty, his ability, his love to bring about a healing in her life. Incredible testimony of God's healing power. And students, I want to share another little story with you about a man that is very precious to me or that was very, very precious to me in my life. He was like a father to me and that was my wife's father, my father-in-law. He was a pastor for 40 years serving Jesus faithfully with his whole heart. But six months ago, he passed away from cancer. And over the two years of this fight with cancer, he trusted God every single day that God would intervene and do a miracle in his life. And yet six months ago, that prayer and that faith was not answered the way that he would have wanted it to go. And it wasn't answered the way that we would have wanted it to go. So what do we do? What do we do in this situation? Well, it's tempting. It's tempting to be discouraged. It's tempting to question God. And we can even go through these times. But ultimately, students, we must understand that when it comes to healing, that God is sovereign and that the final choice belongs to him. We must also understand, students, that God is love. Every single action that he performs is motivated by love. Every single healing that he chooses to withhold is motivated by love. And ultimately, 
It is always not for our glory, but for his glory. In the passing away of my father-in-law, there was so much glory that went to God. So much glory that went to the Lord. There are so many, many, many testimonies of how his life spoke to so many people. There are so many testimonies of the faith that he carried in his heart for God to heal him. And how he held on to that faith to the very, very end. Even when God was not, did not permit the healing to happen. And so students, we must know and understand that God desires and wants to heal. But there are times where God withholds healing. Because ultimately students, my father-in-law is healed today. Today, he is in heaven, completely healed. With a brand new body. A heavenly body in heaven. Worshipping God. But it didn't maybe go the way that we wanted it to go. It's not the opportunity for us to lose heart. To be discouraged. To lose hope in who God is. But to know that he is a God of love. He is a God that is sovereign. And we must trust that whatever he does. Whether he heals whether he chooses to withhold healing, that ultimately it is for the glory of God. And that if we don't understand today and can't understand today, we don't need to worry, students. We don't need to question because God is still in control. And I want to encourage you with that today, students. If you have experienced a healing today or a healing in your life, praise God for that healing. Praise God that that was how, what he chose to do. And we pray that in that healing, the glory of God will be shown to so many others. But if you are facing today a situation in your life where God has not yet healed you or has chosen for now to withhold that healing, I want to challenge you students. Praise God for that. He knows what he's doing. He is in control. And I tell you, he's going to use this for his glory. You just watch and see. You keep your heart right, your attitude right with God. And you will see how he will use your situation for his glory. So we thank the Lord today, students, that he is sovereign. He is a God of love and he was always in control.